Greetings, people. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very long overdue Q&A. Um, we'll get into the questions in a minute, which are going to be read by my lovely wife, just off camera here. I'll move into camera. All right, okay. Meh. But first, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for your continued and ongoing support, um, watching my videos, liking the videos. And an extra special thanks to my um, fantastic patrons and channel members. It's been a really, um, really tough start to 2023. The first half of the year has just been um, pretty rubbish, to be honest. Um, but it does warm my heart to know I've got all you guys behind me supporting me. So thanks a lot for that. Uh, I'm not going to waffle on too much. Um, none of this is scripted, so it's just my um, answers to the questions as they come. But yeah, get to my wife to ask the first question. Okay, would you like something travel related, personal or miscellaneous? Uh, we'll do the travel related questions first. Okay. What is the best train you have ever been on? The best I've ever been on? Well, in terms of the scenery, it's probably got to be the Bonina Express, but if we're talking the actual physical train, it's, it's got to be the Shinkansen in Japan, the, I think it's the N700 Shinkansen. Brilliant trains, really smooth ride quality. Bucket list item, of course, as well for me. Um, for a long time, it was, it was a shame I could only do about fifteen minutes on one, but it was, yeah, they're phenomenal trains. Right. What is your best sleeper train experience? Best sleeper train experience. Um, honestly, I'm a big fan of what the Night Riviera has to offer in terms of a core sleeper experience. It's, you know, you got really comfy beds, you got really, you know, good rolling stock. The old Mark Three coaches of um. Stood the test of time really well. Um, you know, you've got a good breakfast on offer. It's not too, nothing too extensive, but I, I tend to find the more basic food items on trains like that tend to be a bit better. And yeah, really nice. Really, it feels like a proper luxury experience, in my opinion. What is the most scenic train you've ever been on? Well, <laughs> kind of already answered that one. Uh, Benina Express um, It's probably the most scenic. Um, if you'd seen my video a couple of weeks ago, it was fantastic glaciers and high peaks and all that sort of thing brilliant um i must say i was also a big fan of the california zephyr that we did uh last year it was now and the coast starlight's another good one um all these in america the southwest chief was another um scenic highlight for me if you those three are out in america ahead of um amtrak long distance trains they are and also domestically within the UK, the West Highland line as well, very, very scenic. It's only a few hours, like the Bernina line, but um, yeah, the scenery there is nothing short of spectacular too. So uh, Bernina Express, but uh, there are others as well that come close to it, I think, as well. Which operator is most user-friendly and why? Which operator is most user-friendly and why? To be honest, that's a pretty hard question to give a um, definite answer for, really. There's... You know, you think to ones like um, UBB in Austria are quite simple to use. Same with um, Deutsche Bahn in um, Germany. Again, fairly simple to use, fairly user friendly. It's you know ticketing straightforward. Um, it's hard to really give a definite answer. Then you look at some other operators. Um, you know, in the UK, we've got a very complicated ticketing system that really needs updated. But um, it's hard to give a definite answer as to say which one's the most user-friendly. Is that I can, I can probably pick faults with most operators if I'm being honest. Um, it, it, I don't know how to answer that question if I'm being honest. Um, I can list off loads that aren't user-friendly though. Well, on the topic, mm -hmm. if there was an operator that you could remove from the UK rail network, who would it be? Oh, pff, uh, based off past performance I've had with them, I'm afraid it's going to have to be of anti-West Coast. The trains are always late, <laughs> in my experience, and you can sometimes receive some quite um, shoddy service. Um, they're mainly owned by First Group, who've just had, um, obviously, the Transpennine Express franchise stripped of them. Um, or, are they called franchises anymore? They're called something else, I think. But, um, yeah, Avanti, I've had several delays and bad experiences with them, and they have been in the news as well for train cancellations at that too. Might the answer to this one be Avanti too? What? what is the worst train to ride on? The worst type of train to ride on? Oh god, how do I answer? How do I pick just one? Um, not a fan of the new CAF Civities, um, 
particularly the Northern ones. Um, the Trans Pennine ones are actually all right, but the Northern ones are just. A lot of people seem to like them. I do not like them. I think they're rattly, and I think the seats are uncomfortable. You know, even compared to Pacers, really. I know probably people are probably going to come at me in the comments for that and tell me about how I'm wrong, but um, yeah, it's it's got to be the new 195s and the I think it's three three ones, the electric version. Also, excuse if there's any background noise. Um, one of my cats has. Hello, Lily. <laughs> Come here, come say hi to the camera. Come here. One of my cats has decided to come and say hi. This is Lily. But she's also making a lot of noise and is very clumsy. <laughs> well then, off you trot. You need a brush, but you're not gonna let me. Right. If you do decide to come back to Norway in the future, I apologize for the butchering of this pronunciation. Would you like to explore the Ruros line? We'll put the. I think we'll put it up on screen. Yes, I would. I do like a uh, niche little um, lines like that. I tend to be operated by commuter trains. I think they're always underrated, and they often, I often tend to see them as hidden gems a bit. You know, when you've got a big flashy intercity train running on them, it's uh, you know people tend to come to them. Whereas it's just a little. I think is it the zero units they operate on them. It can sometimes be a bit. You know, forgotten about, if you will. And um, yeah, I like little lines like that, little niche lines like that. So definitely, if I'm in Norway again. Um, if you had to stop on the trains, what other modes of transportation would you like to explore on your channel? Um, <laughs> any of them really. I'm happy to do. I'm not a big fan of buses, really. I, I quite like. I'm quite into aviation, so I'd probably enjoy doing that a bit more. Um, I like taking the overnight ferries as well. They're really um really wish I get to do more of them and hopefully we'll get to do more over the summer but um we'll wait and see. Are there any videos that you made that won't see the light of day? Yes a Renfe Alvia video. Uh, the conductor basically told me if I didn't stop filming she was going to call the police and it was the day before my 20th birthday and I didn't much uh, fancy spending my 20th birthday with the Garda Civil or police in Spain so um yeah that one. <laughs> um, Another visitor. Another. Oh. Ow! Oh! Put me in the face, why don't you? Next question, please. <laughs> what starter advice would you give to someone wanting to be a blogger? Just be yourself. Do video, film videos you want to film, not ones that you think are going to get views, and just be yourself, and the rest will all fall into place. I think that's the single biggest bit of advice I could give. The next question is actually for me. It says, "Does your wife enjoy the trains as much as you?" Well, yes and no. Yes, I enjoy the journeys and travelling and seeing loads of different places of the world. But no, because I'm actually a little bit scared of trains. And like, the, Sorry, I shouldn't the ones that go really fast or the ones that people deem to be like, oh, I can't think of the words, but yeah, they scare me. I don't like it, but I like seeing the world, so I'll do them. But sometimes they, they spook me. What is the most nostalgic type of train for you? HST, without a shadow of a doubt. Specifically the old um, GNER ones, or LNER as they eventually came into. Um, I used to, obviously, as you know, live in Inverness, right up the top of the uh, top of Scotland, and I have a lot of family down on the south coast, so quite regularly we would find ourselves taking the 755 service from Inverness to King's Cross, and it was, at that time, always on a HST, and... I've got very fond memories of sitting on them for hours on end and I still, you know, I know they're dwindling in their twilight years but if I get the chance to go on a HST I always uh, grasp it with both hands, as it were. Well, this might have the same answer but what type of train is your favourite on the UK network? Favourite currently on the UK network? Um, probably not the HSTs. They're a bit, I, I do, you know, I do like them but they're 40, 50 years old now. They, they, they do need replaced. I think the Stabler Flirt um, that Greater Anglia have uh, probably the best. Um, you know, they're the most, if we're talking about user friendly trains, you know, you've got level boarding, so you've got good accessibility, and they're just all round very comfortable trains to use. I know the seats that Greater Anglia have put in them maybe aren't the best, but, you know, I've travelled on Stadler Flirts in all different countries, and um, yeah, I've yet to have a bad experience with one. What train operator do you think serves the worst food? Amtrak. 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Not the dining car food, but the flexible dining food and the definitely the cafe car food. I with can the, agree with those that. Those horrible steamed meals. You, you'd probably get a better meal in prison, if I'm being honest. Do you think the UK government invests enough money into the north of England? Um, I'm going to answer that based on just railways because I don't want to get all too political. It, it, sort of. They've got they've bought new trains, but I feel like they've cheaped out a bit. Whether you know the captivities aren't fantastic, um, you know why why they're ordering two and three car trains still. Um, I know platform lengths might be a bit of a limitation in some places, but you know you could really do with a lot longer trains. It's still not uncommon to be standing even off peak on these trains, and yeah, I'd like to see more more money invested in perhaps. Uh, Longer trains, and it is good to see, though, that they are electrifying the um, Huddersfield line between Leeds and Manchester. Um, that's been long overdue, but to answer your question, yeah, sort of. Do you prefer modern trains or older trains? Well, I have more nostalgia for old trains, but, um, you know, I always look to modern trains for, you know, they're the future, they're the trains you're going to be sat on for the next 30, 40 years. Not, not all on one go, obviously, but, um, you know... So I do take more interest in the newer trains because they're what's coming, they're what we're going to be stuck with. Is probably the answer to my que that question, yeah. Where do you find your cheap fares? Uh, I, ser I search around, I look at um, train booking websites such as Trainline, TrainPal, those sort of ones. Usually though, if I find an itinerary, I'll try and split ticket it through the operator myself. I can usually work it out just to be a little bit cheaper that way and obviously having a rail card helps as well. Now, you've become quite popular on your channel for your toilet reviews. Okay. <laughs> What's the worst toilet you've ever come oh, across? Oh, God, can I only pick one of them? <laughs> um, oh, coach on Amtrak, I just... Oh, you know, when you're on a train for three days or two days or whatever, and they don't clean the toilets in between, by the end of them, they're just unsanitary is the best way to describe Vile. What are your thoughts on the creation of the Great British Rail Railways? Um... I don't even know what it is, to be honest. If I'm being honest, I still don't know the wiser to what it is. My understanding was that it was replacing the franchised operators, so it was going to go back to like what it was like with British Rails. You sort of got Intercity and you know the regional railways. But as far as I can tell, not a right lot's changed. Obviously, a lot of the uh, operation of some trains has been taken over by the um, operator of Last Resort, which is the government. Back, you know, the government-run ones, you know, you think LNER, Transpennine Express, Northern, you think there's a few others too. But, you know, not, I, I believe a lot of the private operators are now operating it under contract, but that doesn't seem like nationalising the railways. That just seems like a different form of privatisation, in my opinion. And, and not a right lot seems to have changed. And I think we're, what, two, three years on now from the announcement that rail franchising was ending? What is the longest journey you've done over land? Over land, that would be New York to San Francisco via the Lakeshore Limited and the California Zephyr. And I'd highly recommend it if you ever get the chance. It's expensive, but it's certainly a trip I'll remember the rest of my life, and I'm sure you will too. Yeah. Do you have any specific aircraft you would want to fly on? Yes. Um, I, my nearest airport's obviously Leeds, Bradford, and there's a leisure airline. If you're from the UK, you've probably heard of them. Well, almost certainly. If you're not from the UK, you might not have. They're um, called Jet2, and they still operate the old 737-300s, only out of Leeds, Bradford, for some reason, on their um, sort of shorter international routes. Um, and I'd like to do them before they go, as they're basically the bar, maybe a couple of operators in Russia, the... Um, one of the last operators to still operate the um, 737 Classics for passenger services in Europe, as far as I'm aware, at least. If you could report any British service throughout history, which one would it be? Uh, I'd like to give a good go of the old intercity um, towards the late 80s or early 90s, you know, just before privatisation. Then I could really can. I obviously wasn't around before then, um, around then. Um, so it'd be nice to be able to compare the two, really, for me. On the topic of older trains, are there any plans to ride any heritage trains? It, again, it's sort of yes and no. If there's, you know, West Coast Railways, obviously I did the um, the Jacobite a few years ago, which was on an old steam train. Um, so if I could do more of them, yes. But the heritage lines tend to be quite short and I'm not... I'll maybe give it a go and see how it goes, but, you know, it's some, maybe a bit short for a trip report in some instances. 
can you come to different parts of the UK, such as Ireland, the Isle of Wight, or Wales? Yes, I plan to do all of them eventually. Ireland, um, the hotels are incredibly expensive there. Um, not just Northern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland too. Um, I know they've got a big renting crisis over there too, so it might be a little bit challenging logistically. Wales, I've got plans to come um, down and review a few new trains, hopefully later this year. And where else was it, sorry? Uh, Wales, Ireland and Isle of Wight. Isle of Wight, yes. We'll, um, I'll hopefully, next time I'm down south or something, get over and film the uh, new trains. And that brings us to the end of the travel questions. Personal or miscellaneous? Oh, personal. What? When did you get hooked on trains and what made you decide to start a YouTube channel? Uh, got hooked on trains basically as long as I can remember. <laughs> before, I, before I can remember, basically. Um, I got... what. Started me, um, what made me want to make a YouTube channel rather is that um, back in 2019 I was going to the United States to obviously do the first trip across America um, and I just wanted to document the experience and it kind of just took off from there. I, I found I really enjoyed doing the filming, I, uh, you know, it was something I enjoyed and something to pass the time while I was sat on these long trains. So how's Leeds United doing? Um... <laughs> You know, they should probably be relegated straight to League One based off some of their <laughs> performances last season. I don't know. Same old. Here's a question that would be interesting to answer because it's changed. What? Why are you moving down south? I'm not anymore. It's fallen through. I'm staying in Bradford. <laughs> How come? Uh, Because I want to. And I think she wants to. You're right, Koshka. We do. Bradford is our home. We have decided. I meant by she, I meant my wife, not Koshka. <laughs> oh, I don't want to get kicked in the face again. What's your favourite type of bread? <laughs> uh, white farmhouse. <laughs> and lastly, on the personal topic, but a very important question. Yes. How do you deal with negativity and trolls? Um, I ignore it, basically. I... Uh... You know, at first I took it quite personally, uh, but you kind of just grow thick skin to it. And I just, you know, if I see a negative comment or, you know, if it's general, cri you know, genuine criticism that we can improve on, by all means, you know, I'm more than happy to take that. But just vile comments and trolls, just, just, they're not even worth my time, really. And that goes for in life in general, not just YouTube. Okay. Now onto the miscellaneous questions and the last few questions we have for this video. Yes. What editing software do you use? Hit Film Express. It's free and you can download it online at any time. Will we ever get a day in the life type of video? From planning your journey, getting to the station, just the amount of work that goes into it. I, I have thought about doing this several times. I've been meaning to do it for about two years. So uh, yeah, at some point. Do you plan on playing Train Simulator? I play it more than I'd care to admit. <laughs> I can vouch for that. It's all I ever hear. Oh, I'll play Euro Truck Simulator and Flight Simulator too. <laughs> do you ever feel uncomfortable when filming in public? Uh, yes, so you do get a lot of stares. However, I've now got a um, like a clip that goes on my uh, backpack strap. Um, and I can turn the front screen on my camera off so it looks like it's off. I found I don't get as much attention from other people as a result of that, which is... Definitely makes it a lot easier to film the video. And we've reached the last question. Ooh. Will we get more vlog style content from you, not just day in the life? Yes, but camera confidence is a little bit of a thing that maybe needs worked on. Um, especially when you're still talking in public to the camera, I tend to feel a bit of a prat doing that. But hopefully, because I do, I do think they're the best videos that come out, um, so... Yeah, hopefully. Anyway, thanks for watching this Q&A. Um, it's been long overdue. I appreciate the last Q&A I did was probably, what, two, maybe three years ago. So I hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll hopefully have another one <laughs> not as long a part as that. Um, but with that, thanks for watching. Um, I'll see you on Friday for a trip that didn't quite go to plan. Thanks. Bye-bye.